Well, good morning, Grace Bible Church. We are so thankful and blessed for you to be joining us this morning. I pray that God will bless you and your family beyond the measures as you continue to be faithful and give towards his kingdom and to build what he is trying to do here in the local church. I pray that God will bless you and just continue to pour out his blessings on you. Now, I would like to also let you know that there are many ways that you you are able to give. You can give by cash or check. You can give by text to give, or you can go online to gracelidle.church. If you are new here, we want to welcome you. If you are a first time, second time, third time, or 50th time visitor, we want to say welcome to Grace Bible Church. Scripture, O stands for observation, A stands for application, 
and P stands for prayer. So I'm going to ask you, if you have a pen and a paper handy, I want you to grab it right now. And we're going to write down. I have scripture that I'm going to read. And as I read it, I want you to observe. Now this is something that is a great way to do with your kids during the night before they go to bed, doing the soap method, finding scripture, observe the scripture, talk about how you can apply the scripture, and then pray together. So this morning I have my scripture handy, and as I read it, I want you to observe it. And as I read, if there's something that sticks out to you, or that God is trying to speak to you about, write it down. Now we're going verse by verse to make it easier for you to be able to write down exactly where it's at. Now this passage that we're reading today is found in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. And it's verses 1 through 18. So as I read, will you observe and write down what God is speaking to you this morning? John chapter 14, verse 1. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How many of us have ever felt that way? We're not sure where we're headed. We don't know where we're going. Lord, we do not know where you are going and how we can know the way. But Jesus said to him, Lord, we do not. Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 7 says, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do. Because I go to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. You see, I think so many of us, I want to pause right there. So many of us will read it and we'll stop right there. We think, I believe in Jesus, I'm good to go. But he didn't stop there. He said, keep my commandments. What are his commandments? You got the Ten Commandments. You got the commandment of love your brother, loving others. What are the commandments? Do you know the commandments? We're to live by them. But it says in verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, 
that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will believe and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. There's a day he's coming back. Amen. So I hope that was a long enough passage for you to write something down. To be able to write something. And if you did write something down, we read scripture, we observe, and now how can you apply it? Just make a couple bullet points in your notes. With what God is speaking to you, how can you begin to apply it to your walk with Christ? How can you start applying it to your life? Just take a couple seconds. So as our team leads us into another couple songs of worship, I'm going to ask you to put your notes aside for us all to stand as we just join in unity and prayer. And as I pray over you, whatever you wrote down, begin to ask God to how to apply it to your life. Ask God to begin to move in your life. It doesn't matter what you're going through. He's a great God. He's a big God. He's a loving God. He's a healing God. There's nothing you could have done where he will reject you. He will leave the 99 to come and rescue you. He loves you. You are seen. You are valued. And you are loved by the eyes of our almighty God. So, Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, Lord Jesus. We come as one voice. We come as one people, as a church, to rise up, to speak your great name, Lord God. I pray for every single individual here today. As they wrote down a scripture or a passion, a passage or maybe a statement that they felt you speaking to them about. Whatever it is, I pray that into existence. I pray that they will chew on it. I pray that they will review it throughout the week. I pray that they will begin to ask themselves, how can they apply it to their life? And Lord God, as they do, I pray that you will pour out your blessings. I pray that you will begin to show your face in the weak, in the weary, in the ones who want to give up, in the ones who don't think there's a tomorrow, in the ones that are unsure about their finances, the ones that are unsure about their marriages, the ones that are unsure about their walk with you. I pray that you'll begin to show your face in their life. Begin to reveal yourself in their life. Use them as a vessel for your kingdom. As we worship you, our almighty God. Let us begin to give over our worries and our frustrations. Our cares and our bitterness. Our hate, our anger. Let us just give it over to you. As we continue to worship your name.
Oh 
it's it's a perfect white that you know when you when you, the when you get married and the, the girl has a white dress, it's white as can be, crisp, clean. There's nothing on it. It's spotless. When you ask Jesus into your life, God says, "I make you as white as snow, not Texas snow." Remember that it's not that dirty stuff. When you still have stains, God says, "I don't I don't remember those stains in your life. You are white as snow, and you are covered by the blood." Jesus Christ. That means all your sins are forgiven. Everything that's been on your past is gone. It's forgiven. Just remember that as white as snow. So if you guys see snow, remember Jesus did that for you. He didn't have to. If I was the only person, if you're the only person on planet Earth, He says, I died for you, and my blood was you know, for you. That's the amazing thing about this song. It's so amazing. Sometimes we lose that. And sometimes you go, but God can't forgive me. I did this, 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 you name it. You have in your head what you did before you got here for this week. But God says, my people, my children. And you say, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for everything I've done in my life. Please forgive me for all my sins. And God says, boom, you're white as snow. There's no hand and gifts and what's about it. God doesn't go, oh, remember what you did last week? He doesn't remember that. I want you to sing this with me. There's a freedom. If you honestly believe that, then you're truly saved and covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. I dare you to do something different than I would also. And say, God, here I am. Right? Or is it, oh, precious? We serve an awesome. Thank you, worship team, for leading us in a time of presence. Before you're seated, would you just turn to the person to your left, to your right, in front of you, behind you, and just give them a great big wave with a beautiful smile. If you have a mask on, stick your tongue out, they will never know. They will never know. But you may be seated this morning. If you are new here, we just want to begin by saying welcome. If you are visiting somebody that's getting baptized, or if you are new and you're trying to decide if this is your home church or not, we want to say welcome to Grace Bible Church. Welcome to a place that is all for all people, a church for all people. I'm going to ask you if for our ushers to come forward and as our ushers come forward if you are new here if this is your first time maybe it's your second or third time and you haven't um filled one of these out we have what we call a you card where we would like to get to know you and who you are if you are new this morning or if this is your first time or you haven't filled one of these out would you just slip up your hand real fast so one of our ushers will hand one of these to you but i just want to say welcome Welcome, welcome. On the screen, you'll see a place, a church for all people. We desire to be a church for all people. A place where people can come together as a body of Christ to be discipled, nurtured, nourished, and then sent back out on their mission field for what God has called you. But the next slide, it gives you the statement of what we're about. So that all people become fully devoted followers of Jesus and fulfill their purpose. God placed you here on purpose for a purpose. You are not a failure. You are not a quitter. God has called you to a place. He will strengthen you and build you up. Before we send our ushers out and we pray for this morning's tithe and offering, I want to give you a quick update. Last week we began a building campaign. 
We are needing 8,500. That'll help us to be able to update this room, but it'll also help us to really fix the floor. There's a few spots in the floor you'll feel that are soft. And so right now, from now until the time of December, we're needing $8,500 to get it done. And right now, as all the pledges have come together, we are at $5,990. Praise God. Yes, give Him the glory. Give Him the glory. Our God is a mighty God. He will provide what needs to be done. He will provide. He knows exactly where we're headed. We just got to be quick to listen to Him. But can we just bow our heads and just go to our Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again. We thank you for a time where we get to worship you, where we get to honor you, where we get to come together as a body of Christ to be discipled and then sent back out to fulfill the purpose that you have called us here to do. Lord God, we know in this very hour that it is foggy, it's misty. There's things happening around us. But what we do know is that we have a God that can settle the chaos within us. We have a God that will silence all storms within us. A God that will place us on a firm foundation. So as waves crash around us, as waves start destroying places around us, as the enemy goes out, and tries to still kill and destroy, we know, we know we serve a great God that will calm the raging seas. We thank you for what you're going to do. In your mighty name, we pray this morning, everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Now, I want to go over just a little bit of what we're going to be talking about. I'm not going to talk for long. I'm going to have some pinpoints, and then we're all going to head outside, where we're going to have a, a beautiful, beautiful baptism. I, I am so excited. I am so excited. Somebody asked me, and I said, you know what? Being right in front of the church on Main Street is a blessing in disguise. I tell you what, the inheritance that God has given this place, I am just so excited. For every single person that drives by, that sees what's happening, I pray that God will reveal himself to them. And when they say, what is going Going on, they'll experience Jesus in a greater and mightier way. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm excited. I tell you, I really loved doing the seven letters to the seven churches. It was really good. It was really hard. But I tell you what, and through every single letter, we have been able to learn something and grow. And so today, we're starting a new series called The Holy Spirit. Everybody say The Holy Spirit. We're going to be starting the Holy Spirit. This is going to be for many weeks. But well, I want to talk about hope, the Holy Spirit because we hear this word, Holy Spirit. We know the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But I want us to really understand who the Holy Spirit is, what He can do, and who He is. And so we're going to look at that through the next few weeks. But today, I want us to look at who the Holy Spirit is, where is the Holy Spirit in Scripture, and why is the Holy Spirit even necessary in our life? Why is He even necessary? Why do we need Him? And so the first thing that the Holy Spirit does for us is our salvation. We need Him for our salvation. Look at what John chapter 20, verse 21. Now, for time's sake, I put it all on the screen. So if you don't have your Bible, it's on the screen. But if you do have your Bible, we're in the New King James Version. The first one is for salvation. John 20, 21 says, So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So on arrival, when we get out of this world of just believing that there is a God, and we stop taking this car ride, and we step out and begin to have faith in our God, then what happens is that Holy Spirit, when we accept Christ into our life, the Holy Spirit enters into us. But not only for our salvation, but for our possession. The Holy Spirit is there for our possession. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Do you not know... That you are the temple of God. That the Spirit of God 
dwells in you. He can dwell in you. You say, okay, I'm getting a glimpse, but why does that matter? Why does it matter? Why do I need him? Why? What is he? We also need him for the knowledge. The Holy Spirit will give us knowledge. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 19, 9, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 through 12, it says, But as it is written, I has not seen, no ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of the man in which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. You see, when we have Christ in our life, he comes into our life. When we have Christ in our life, the Holy Spirit enters. And when he enters, he will help us and he will give us power. Look at what Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Also in Micah chapter 3 verse 8 says, But truly I am fully, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. But not only is the Holy Spirit there to give us power, but he's also there for protection. Everybody say that word, protection. In Titus chapter 3, verse 4 through 7, it says, But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior that having been justified by his grace we should become hearers according to the hope of eternal life but not only for protection he is there to help give us vision you see pastor I got 2020 vision I am good to go I can already see I'm not talking about that vision okay I'm not talking about that type of vision. I'm talking about, have you noticed what's happening around us kind of vision? Yes, Pastor, I have. I've seen rioting. Yes, Pastor, I've seen these people that are burning down cities. Yes, Pastor, I've seen. But are you seeing the spiritual warfare taking place around us? Are you seeing the evil that is trying to take over the world? Are you seeing? The Holy Spirit helps us to see what is happening around us. We see this in Acts chapter 13, verse 1 through 4. It says, Now in the church that was at Aeon, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius, of Siren. I know I'm jacking up the names and it's okay. I know you do it at home too. <laughs> Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, the Tetriarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then have fasted and prayed and laid hands on them. They sent them away. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down. And from there, they sailed to Cyprus. The Holy Spirit is going to take you places that you've never experienced before. But through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, He will get you through it. Amen. 
We might go through Tetris waters. We might go through waters that are deep. We might go through waters that are wavy. And we might not be sure even if we're going to make it out. But what we have to make sure is that we're being led by the Holy Spirit to get us through and to fulfill the purpose he had placed us there for. The last thing is the ultimate redemption. The ultimate redemption. In Romans chapter 8 verse 9 through 11. It says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If needed, the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. We must allow the Holy Spirit to activate these things in our life. So I'm going to ask you. I told you it's going to be real short. I want to ask you. Have you accepted Christ into your life where you're allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you, to guide you? Have you allowed the Holy Spirit to enter in, to do what you have called, what he has called you to do? Because I truly, truly believe during this hour that we are living in, we need the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us more than ever. We need God to move and to direct our path, the footsteps that he places in front of us. Like I talked about a few weeks ago, we need to just jump, and he says to jump. Not pause and say, wait, I need to pray about it. Instead of saying, and you know, when you go, I, I said this a few weeks ago, if you go skydiving, and they say, hey, now's the time to jump, you're not going to say, well, sir, pause, I need to pray about it. If you go bungee jump and they say jump, you're not going to say, sir, but before I do that, I need to pray about this. Yes, I know I'm strapped and you might push me, but I mean, no, we just go and they say go. So instead of waiting and the Holy Spirit says to move, we need to be ready to put that foot in front of us and move. We need to go and he says go. And so today I am so excited. We have four that's getting baptized today, this afternoon. And I'm so excited for what they, God is going to do in their life. I talk about baptism like it's a power up. When I was in kids, I would explain with the Barbie, and I would put them down in the water, we'd show them, we'd explain what baptism is all about. But it's a celebration of life that God has done in our life. To proclaim His name on high. Say, God, I give you everything. And so for those that are going to be getting baptized, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and make your way outside. I'm going to pray our way out. But I want the Holy Spirit to lead our direction even today. Through this special time, through this time where God is going to move, through this time that God is going to want to speak, I truly believe that God is going to move through every single one of their lives. And I know there's many here today that haven't made that step to get baptized. And let me tell you, it is a great step, a great step to do. It's a great step to get closer to God. So can we just pray right now? Heavenly Father, we worship you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're going to do in the lives today, Lord God. I pray as as we just call upon your name, I pray that you will be glorified today. I pray as they are baptized, as they go back in the water, that their past, that the sins, that everything is just washed away. That they won't go back, but they'll only move forward to where you call them to go now. That you'll begin to wash them as white as snow. That you'll begin to move in their lives and in their families' lives. And you'll pour out their blessings. Pour out your blessings in their life, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're going to do. 
We welcome the Holy Spirit in this place today. And in this moment. In your mighty name that we pray. In your mighty name we pray. We're going to say. All throughout my history Your faithfulness has walked beside me The winter storms made way for spring In every season From where I'm standing